Welcome to ClinLearn's Medical Writing e-Learning Series. In this video we will explore the scope of medical writing. We will try and understand, what are the different types of documents a medical writer will be authoring. Let's get started. Scope of Medical Writing When you think of clinical research, what comes to your mind? Let's list them down. A doctor? A patient? A nurse, maybe. New medicines. A hospital. Next, maybe a big pharmaceutical company. What else? A government health authority? Like FDA or EMA. These are the roles that come to our mind when we say clinical research. But wait. Where is medical writer? What does a medical writer do? And where does he fit in? in grand scheme of events. A medical writer is a key member who leads the activity called documentation. The documentation connects all pieces in the puzzle, in clinical research. It is the documentation, that determines if a drug can be approved or not. As you are aware, the process of drug development, includes three stages. The preclinical stage, in which, the candidate drugs are studied in cells and animals. The clinical trial stage, during which, the drugs are studied in humans. In the post-marketing stage, the impact of drugs is studied in real-world is settings. Throughout this process, the organization, studying and testing their potential drugs, has to provide a documented evidence to the health authorities. This slide shows an overview of documents during drug development. Please note, this is not an exhaustive list. Rather, the list of most important documents. In this video we are focusing on documents required during clinical research stage. So we will start with a document called Clinical Development Plan. Let's imagine, potential drug A has passed the in silico studies, the in vitro and in vivo studies and also the animal testing. What next? The company starts seriously thinking about, how to take this potential drug A forward. Plans have to be made for, how, when and how many clinical studies have to conduct it. Whom should the drug be given to? Who is the target population? What is the budget? Is it even worth it? How should the drug be marketed? What should be the cost? Can we make profits? These and several questions have to be answered. The clinical development plan is an instrument, to answer, at least some of these questions, with reasonable accuracy. The clinical development plan can be considered as a strategy document. The content of the document provides, key decision points, provides go, no-go criteria, and overall risks and contingency plans. Typical contents of a clinical development plan include, Background Pharmacology, Scientific Summary, and Rationale of the Drug This section summarizes pharmacological properties of the drug, what is known, what is not known, potential target populations, indications etc. Clinical Studies Planning This is the core and most important section of a clinical development plan. A general outline for how many trials should be conducted, at what phases, details of each clinical trial planned for the drug, from phase 1 to phase 3, and phase 3b and 4. Schedule of deadlines, milestones, and decision making, this section provides the conditions for go or no go decisions. When should the development program be continued, when should the program be halted? What external situations should be taken into account? Development costs and budgets, this section outlines the cost of conducting planned clinical trials and other activities. Identification of potential issues and bottlenecks in the development process, this section identifies what are the potential barriers or bottlenecks. Can they be mitigated? What are the additional resources required? Regulatory and market strategy for the product, this section identifies the target markets, existing competition, and potential regulatory strategy for obtaining marketing approval. Now, let's look at the documents required during the clinical trials. 
The documents listed on the screen are essential documents for conducting a clinical trial. When I say a clinical trial, I mean all the documents shown here are required for every clinical trial a pharmaceutical company conducts. For example if I am conducting a phase 1 study, I will have to prepare, a clinical study protocol, informed consent form and investigators brochure, before a study starts. When the study is completed, the results are analyzed, and presented in a clinical study report, clinical overviews, and clinical efficacy and safety summaries. A risk management plan is required when the company plans to apply for a marketing authorization. And, when a health authority conducts an inspection or if there is an internal or external audit, responses have to be provided by the company in a well-documented format. All these documents are governed by stringent regulatory guidelines. The content and structure of a clinical trial protocol is based on ICHGCPE6. Here you can see the definition of a clinical trial protocol as per ICHGCP. In essence, a protocol is a project plan for a clinical trial. The document serves as a guide to many stakeholders, including the study investigator and staff, the clinical scientists, statisticians, medical writers, and also to regulators. The content and structure of an informed consent form is also based on ICHGCPE6. Here you can see the definition of an informed consent process as per ICHGCP. Informed consent form is one of the most important tool to ensure the trial is conducted ethically. It demonstrated that the trial participant's consent was obtained before administrating the experimental drug. The content and structure of an investigator's brochure is also based on ICHGCPE6. Here you can see the definition of an investigator's brochure as per ICHGCP. The purpose of this document is to provide the information on the investigational drug to the study investigator. The clinical study report is one of the most important documents in a clinical trial, as it documents the success or failure of a trial. The structure and content of this report is based on ICHE3 guideline. The clinical overviews and clinical summaries are higher level documents. These documents provide a summary of results from multiple clinical trials that are submitted in a marketing authorization application. The content of these documents is built based on ICHM4E, the guideline for common technical document. The companies prepare risk management plans according to ICHE2E guidelines and based on the regional health authority requirements. The purpose of this document is to identify any safety related risks to the patients due to this drug and what are the risk mitigation plans. Medical writers are sometimes involved in preparing responses to the audit or inspection findings. There is no standard guideline or format for this document. The medical writer is usually involved due to his or her expertise in documentation. This document is prepared based on the questions raised by the auditors. Audit Response Document In this video, we have discussed the scope of medical writing in clinical research. We have looked at what a clinical development plan is. Further, we looked at the documents required at the start of a clinical trial, when the results are available, and which documents are required after the trial is completed. As the purpose of this video was to gain an understanding of medical writing documents in clinical research. In future videos we will look into post-marketing documents listed on this slide. We thank you for time and hope you find this video useful. Thank you and have a nice day.